Let me share the revelation of the word of God with you. Praise God. The person that God uses, chapter 2. Last week I shared with you on the person that God uses, chapter 1. Who does God use? God is looking for who to use. A politician is looking for who to use. A businessman is looking for who to use. A ritual killer is looking for who to use. Everyone is looking for who will be useful. God is looking for who to use. We've talked about God does not use an orphan. That's what we talked about last week. Today we want to look at the key to being used by God. The key of submission and obedience. So the one that God uses is the one who is submissive and obedient to him. So today we want to explore very briefly the key of submission and dependence. The first temptation and the only temptation against humanity. What brought about the fall of Adam and Eve was the temptation, the attack against submission and dependence. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? In other words, must you continually submit to what God said? The woman said to the serpent, in verse 2, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. That's what God taught us. And we live in obedience, dependence, and submission to that, to that command. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, he had told us, that we shall not eat it all, nor shall we touch it, lest we die. So to live means we stay under, stay in dependence on him, in submission to him. The devil, the serpent, in verse 4, see this. Say to the one, you, you will not surely die. You can't talk about that. Why? God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. That means you will no longer stay under. You no longer be dependent on God. You will be a God unto yourself. Depending on yourself. You don't need to ask God for anything. You don't need to. You don't need God. Because you will be like God. The contradiction I usually tell you is that. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let us make man in our image and likeness. Likeness like us. Image and likeness. Talk about nature. And let them have dominion. The only thing is that this image and likeness of God. What comes from God will rule on behalf of God, under God. And God planted a garden and told, give instruction. When you obey instruction, it shows you are dependent on the one who gave the instruction. Number two, it shows you are submissive. You are in submission to the one who gave the... So when you don't obey, you are saying, I'm not under you. I am either above you or like you. When two mates meet, they quarrel. When you meet, bring two, three, four, five people, all of them meet. The same class, the same ability, the same this. It's so, it's, it's so difficult to have an order. Everybody wants to show. So, so, what is this one? Who told you? Who told you? Who told you? Who told you? And that's the plan of Satan. No order. That's the first attack. So when you hear of the fall of man, the key to the fall of man yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the key is not being in submission under God, not being dependent on God, not being dependent on God. Okay. So having made that, having given you that foundation, so you know that the key to being used by God the plan of God in creating man was a man, 
a being he will use, he will use in his government on earth. That's why the scripture says, let them have dominion. Only God, God is dominion. Only God has dominion and his dominion. So when he says, let them have dominion on earth, means let them be used by us in dominion to rule the earth. For as long as Adam and Eve were in submission to God and dependent on God, they were usable. The day Adam and Eve rebelled against God and no longer submitted and depended on God, Adam and Eve became useless unto God. That you have a little money that pays your bill and you send children to school doesn't mean you are relevant to God. That you are a pastor doesn't mean you are relevant to God. A title is, God doesn't need title. Moses had no title. Moses was a failure. If he had any title. Joshua had no title. Gideon had no title. Before David had no title. So your, your title doesn't impress God. What impresses God? The character that makes you usable. That makes you relevant. To be usable to God means you are relevant to the plan of God. It means you have value in the eyes of God and in the plan of God. There are people who are so mighty, so important in their eyes, but they have no value in the plan of God. Have no value in the children they raise. Have no value in their marriage according to the perspective of God. They have no value in wealth creation. They make money, but God has no value for their money. God has no, they have no relevance to the plan of God. They have companies that are useless to God. They have academic qualification completely useless to God because they cannot be used by God. There are basic qualifications and characteristics, dimensions and dispositions that will make you usable. That will make you useful. Okay. So let's go. Are we ready to go? Rise to your feet. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. No, let's, let's slow down. Let's not pray. First of all, it is to answer the question as you are right now. This one, don't say it to anybody to hear. As you are right now, are you useful to God? Do you have any value in the hand of God? Are you available for God to use, to change things, to establish his order on earth? That's number one question. I'm not sure many people can answer that question in affirmative. That, oh, I'm relevant. Being a pastor, every day of my life that I wake up is a question I ask myself. When I sit down and prepare revelation like this, to come and preach, the first thing is, what is the motive? Why am I preaching this? What is this about? What is all this about? That's the first thing. So the question is that, are you useful? Are you available for God to use, to do something in his, in his life? I mean, in his plan, in his government. Number two, are you willing to be useful? Two questions, are you willing? Number one is, are you useful? Are you available? Do you have what it takes that God can use you to show, to show his plan in marriage, to show his plan in raising children, to show his plan in wealth creation? The second one is, are you willing? That's the question. I will want you in your heart today to take a decision, Lord, I am willing. I really, really want to be useful in your hand. I want to be usable. I want to be an instrument a person that you can use in finance, in wealth creation. I want to be a person that you can use. A person that you can use. A person that you can use in family. I just want you to pray that prayer for yourself. Lord, I want to be that person. Let it be said in my lifetime that I was one of the people on earth that was useful to you. Usable to you. Usable in your hand. That I was available to be used to change things. I was available for you to use me to alter the plans on earth and to establish your kingdom on earth. I just want you to pray that prayer over yourself. Lord, make me one of them. Make me one of them. 
Lord, I answer that call today. Change me. Change me. Change me. Change something in me. Lord, give me that foundation, that character that will make me a person that will be used and can be used in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. Be seated. Let's take a scripture that will come in a direction. The cry of the Spirit is Abba Father. The cry of the Spirit is Abba Father. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 to 17. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 to 17. For you did not receive, pay attention to this, you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Let me hear you say, Abba. Make it shout loud and clear. Say, Abba. And Father. Beautiful. The Spirit cries out, Abba, Father. Next verse. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together with him. Shout, Hallelujah. I just want to share with you very briefly on the fact of fatherhood. Number one, a son, a daughter, the hope, the hope, the desire, the longing of a father, a mother, is that the son or the daughter will be usable and useful. I don't know, am I, is there any father that will contradict this? The, at the deepest level of the aspiration, the desire and the craving of a father is that my son will be useful. My daughter will be useful. That my daughter will be relevant. That my son will be relevant. If you are a businessman, a lot of, a lot of barristers, man, maybe lawyers, judges, who impress it upon their children, if not all, at least one of them, they hope will be, will be a barrister. Have you ever thought about that? Accountants will want. A father who is an accountant will loft. I know of a minister in this city. The father, a foremost accountant, who wanted the son to be an accountant. And perhaps the son became useless when he became a minister. He was not useful to the father. A man who is a businessman, a woman who is a businessman, wants to have children who will be relevant to the business. Am I correct? Is a desire. So when God begets, these days we are preaching and teaching about how God begets. Oh, we are born again by grace through faith. We are saved by faith through, by grace through faith. Not our workings, not our good works. That is correct. But why does God beget us? Why does God beget us? What is the vision of you being begotten by grace through faith? That is how you will be judged. You will be judged according to the purpose of adoption, not the facts of adoption. It will be the purpose of adoption. Why were you made son? Why were you made child of God? That is how judgment, how relevant are you as a child of God? How relevant are you as a son? How relevant as a, as, are you as one adopted? How relevant are you in marriage? How is God honored? How is God exalted? How is God represented? How is God worshipped through your marriage? Through your parenting, through your business, through your wealth creation, through your profession, through your management, through your business, whatever you do. How is God honored in your children? How is God exalted in your life? That is where judgment will come from. So the question will not be, are you born again or not? The question is, did you bear the fruit of being born again? That's it. And one of the dimensions of the question is relevance. Say relevance. Relevance is usefulness. 
somebody who is relevant to me, somebody who is useful. Useful, maybe, 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 may have a negative utilitarian connotation, like using somebody. So when you say using somebody, it's always like negative. Using somebody like a material, like somebody, an object that has no life. That's not what I'm referring to. Use means, in this case, value. Bringing value. Adding value. Making a difference. Solving quest problems and answering the questions of life. There are questions God wants you to answer as his adopted one. You are the one representing God. There are situations that God wants to use you to change. Because you are adopted. So when the spirit cries out, Abba, Father. The spirit is making a statement. I am one relevant to the Father. I am one usable and useful to the Father. Oh, am I communicating? It's a testimony. The Father can count on me. The Father can depend on me for his glory to be exalted, for his name to be revealed. The Father can count on me that his kingdom will be made manifest. Abba, Father, is a testimony that I am in submission to God and dependent on God. A basic thing between a father and a son, a father and a child, is a relationship of dependence of the child on the father. The only son that is usable and useful to the father is the one that is dependent. Who begins life dependent. A child that wakes up in the morning, does what he likes, goes where he wants, when he wants, how he wants, returns, does everything according to his own standard, has no difference and reference to, God, to his father. He's a son that the father cannot trust to answer any question on his behalf. So for a son, for a daughter to be relevant to the father, the relationship is that of dependence. The son depending on the father and the father trusting and depending on the son that you will represent me based on the fact that you depend on me. Dependence makes you take instruction. That's what we talked about last week. The one that God fathers, the one that God helps is the one that he instructs, the one that he teaches, the one he, he counsels. Sir, you cannot take instruction if you are independent. You cannot be counseled if you are independent. When somebody comes up to me as a pastor and sits before me and says, I need your counsel. It means I'm dependent. Last Friday, I was in, in a program personal meeting with God that should not accommodate anything. But one of the young pastors who just finished school of the Holy Spirit, I made myself available that I will pastor especially ministers, pastors who went through the school of, or go through the school of the Holy Spirit. He sent me a message in the morning, please, I have an urgent need for counsel on a matter that is pressing. Can I see you today? In a normal situation, I would tell somebody, today is not a day to meet me. Come on, on so so day. But instantly I said, meet me before this time. And he showed up, waited for me. When I was done, I saw him and he took more than one hour of my time and he was worth it. Because he showed number one, I'm dependent. I'm dependent on God and because you represent God over me, I'm showing dependence through you. And I sat down and I gave him counsel that was useful. He walked away relieved. He walked away with a decision. He walked away in a direction. He walked away. He knew he was going somewhere. That brought him relief. That gave me joy. That gave me joy. It brought me the fulfillment of one who is relevant. One who is usable useful to God because you can have title but you are not useful to God you can have office in the church you are useless to the plan of God these are things you cannot forget so the word Abba Father is a cry of dependence is a cry of submission a father and a son they are bond, bonded together, bound together in a relationship of submission. Not the father submitting to the son or to the child, but the son, a child submitting. Going abroad, studying in Harvard and having double PhD 
and coming home does not make you equal to your father does not make you above your father your father may not have been to school may not have known anything but as long as he's your father the relationship between two of you when it comes to on to your side is that of submission say submission the day you break that code you become useless submission doesn't mean that your father in the village who does not know much about hygiene will not begin to teach you about hygiene that's not what submission would mean in this case it means deference to his authority it means in your posture in your relationship with him your posture is that of down and he's up because he's the one who is the source of blessing when he speaks blessing, he stands. When he also speaks against blessing, he stands. Whether a father is a witch or a wizard, don't break the power of submission. Because even in being a witch, a witch or a wizard, when you aggrieve that person, offend and break the protocol of submission, protocol of submission meaning you begin to behave like you are mates to your father or above your father you talk and behave and relate in that sense whether your father knows God or not your father carries a divine authority to stop your life these are institutions you cannot joke with no education no promotion no level in life can compromise the standard. So when the scripture says, because we are sons, the spirit of the son is in our heart, crying out, Abba, Father, is a revelation. You are in submission. In relationship to, with God, you are not at the level of God. You are not contending with God. You are not competing with God. You are not fighting with God. You are not to make suggestions to God. You are not to interpret God. You are not to second guess God. You are not to doubt God. You are to depend on God and submit to God. That's how you can be relevant when you are dependent on God and in submission to God you cannot fail in the plan of God. Let me share something with you briefly because we are, this, we are wrapping this teaching up. This is not meant to be a long teaching. The very first time in the New Testament that the word Abba, Father, came up. It came through the lips of Jesus. And it was in the place of submission and dependence. The very first time that the word came up. Mark chapter 14, verse 35 to 36. Mark chapter 14. Verse 35 to 36. He went a little further. This is talking about his agony in Gethsemane. He went a little further and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Verse 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, Nevertheless means I'm dependent. Nevertheless. Nevertheless means I have not stopped being in submission. Nevertheless. Nevertheless means I weigh the pain, I see the agony. But I'm under you. Submission is arranging your life under, not above. Dominion is arranging your life above. When you are in dominion in a place, you arrange your life above a place, above a people. It means people wait for you. That's why when you go to government house, you go to government circle, everything waits for the president, for the governor to come. Or whoever is the highest in protocol, he arrives last. The way we were taught and brought up in the seminary, and I tried to tell people around me, I didn't go to the university. I have degrees, but I didn't go to the university. And I'm blessed that I didn't go. So there are certain things I don't know. 
where I went to, you are seated before a lecturer comes in. It is not no, it is not conceivable that a lecturer is in a class. He does not cross anybody's mind. It is not something you can contemplate that a lecturer is in class and then you come. It does not exist. It is not something to be. It, do, it, it doesn't exist. I don't know if it does exist now. I don't know because things change. I don't know. That is it. So you come into the seminary. It is one of the things you don't know that it exists. A lecturer is in the class means class. So once he comes in, everybody stands and the class has begun. And when he comes in, he's the last person. Nobody comes in except on by express permission that makes allowance and is understood and accepted that you will come in. Either by way of special privilege or medical situation or your function, your responsibility as a seminarian may demand that you, you leave late and you come and it is known official in the seminary where you serve as a seminarian places you in such a condition that you may arrive late and it is known and understood because it's a service to the system. And we have meeting, whether it's a conference or meeting, anybody that is the authority, when he comes in, he starts. That means everybody is seated. The last person sits three minutes to the time. The last person who comes in, comes in and sits three minutes to the time that the principal will come in. And when the principal comes, everybody rises. So that is why when I have meeting with people, if the closest of people to me, I sit down because all my life will be arranged for that time of meeting. And I sit down, people don't come in, you just know this, this, these are people who don't know, I don't know what they know. And sincerely, you are not the one to teach me. Ita, are you the one to teach me the way you are looking at me? No, stand up and tell people, get it for being quite many, sir. Okay, you will not tell. So I am the one to teach, right? So when I have meeting with you, all of you older than me by 80 years, if I am the principal, when that means you are seated before I come in, it's an order. It's, it's just the basic order of life. It's organization. That's how it is. That's how it is. But that is what it means to have dominion, to have authority. It means things are organized above. Now, submission means things are organized what? Under. So when you are in submission to God, it means you make money. Arranged under God. It means under the scrutiny of God. Under the majesty of God. Under deference and honor to God. Everything you do is under, not above, not at the same level. What does it mean to be the same level? You can do it your way. I say, this is how God wants it. He applies to business. He covers it, does not apply to business. Igbo people, they, they, are, they can relate with that a lot. You know, you don't bring God to business place. Have you heard something like that? It's not only Igbo. Most, Igbo, most business people, it also means the day you need help from God in that business, it does not apply. The day only God can help you in that business, it does not apply. It means you lack the help of God eternally in that business because you organize it shoulder to shoulder with God. And that's what the devil tempted even Adam to do. Why don't you organize your own life independently? And you don't need him. And that's how you marry. That's how you do your stuffs. That's how you run your businesses and run your finances. When you hear the word of God, it looks like an insult and you feel this one doesn't apply to me. So sometimes when you preach and you see somebody puts their heads down and it's just like distracting themselves with other things. It's telling you, well, this one, I have pressed pause. It's not for me. When you get to the point that applies to me, I will press continue. And those are the people on the day of deliverance, there is a pause until destruction before it continues. So, de dependence on God and submission to God gives God power to save you. The power with which God saves you is the power that you allow Him to have over you. Submission and dependence 
is the power you allow God to have over you. Lack of submission, lack of dependence is the power you take from God so that on such a day, he cannot help you. There are so many prayers, we ministers, we pray because sometimes we pray because we want God to answer so that we can tell testimonies. So, 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 so thing. You see, God does not change his standard to honor a priest. The greatest expectation of God over me is not changing people's situation on the day of trouble. It's making people honor him so that he will be there for them on the day of trouble. So if you don't trust God and you trust me, you will die young. I've been saying that every day. I don't have, I don't have permission to help somebody who does not honor God. The only help I have for that person is for the person to honor God first. To come under submission and dependence. Sincerely, what I'm sharing with you is so deep. I have never really expressed it with the first lady because soon after in the process, I had to leave for, the, for retreat to prepare for my weekend and do what I do. So I just call on phone and ask what is happening. Give me update. What is happening? Give me update. And I just pray. But sir, just guy said, nevertheless, living as a son, living in submission, living in dependence, I will have loved to do this. Nevertheless. My father used to say something when we grew up. My father told me a righteous person is a person that on a day of issue that his power is provoked and he, he, needs, he knows what to do and how to do it. And he will say, Na me me na basi. Na me ni basi. Mi kwiru on basi. My father taught me that that is a righteous man. A man who fears the Lord. It's only a man who fears the Lord that, that will say nevertheless. It means take away my own. Take my will. Let me suffer. Let me be the one to suffer, not you. That is the one God uses. A dependent, submissive person who can say nevertheless. Let me be the one to lose. Nevertheless, in business. Nevertheless, in finance. Nevertheless, in marriage. Nevertheless, in your engagement and working with people. Nevertheless, in your relationship with God. Jesus Christ lived a radical of submission and dependence on the Father. John chapter 6, verse 37 and 38. John chapter 6, verses 37 38. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the, the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will. But the will of him who sent me means I have come down to arrange everything about me under the Father. That's why he died. If he had not arranged his own plan under the Father, I will not be purchased. I will not be ransomed. I will not be saved. You are saved. I am saved because the Son organized himself under the Father. Therefore, he became usable and useful to the Father. The Father needed a Savior for, my, for me. For a hopeless man, a hopeless woman, for the wretched world, the father needed that. And the son became the useful person because he arranged himself on that. So you ask yourself question, in your arrangement in life, you are arranging under God or you are arranging above God or you are arranging shoulder to shoulder with God. Leave God alone. Let God do his own thing. I do my own thing. My kabasi yakbe. These are the basis of eternal success of Jesus, the Son of God, that he arranged his life under the Father. Let me drop this line for you. Jesus Christ succeeded completely and perfectly because he submitted and depended on the Father completely and totally. Therefore, he was useful to the Father and usable in the hand of the Father. You cannot depend on God completely and fail in the plan of God. You cannot. Please take this. You cannot depend on God completely and see him in the plan of God. You cannot depend on God completely. You cannot depend on God and submit to God completely and be useless to the plan of God and be useless on the day God needs you. Dependence on God implies submission. 
Dependence on God is built on humility. Humility is acknowledgement of your insufficiency and the completeness of God. Dependence on God permits him to deploy all his resources. Material, spiritual, supernatural, natural and human to give you advantage in every situation. I want to read that again. Dependence on God permits him to deploy all his resources. Dependence on God and submission to God permits God to deploy all his resources, natural and supernatural, spiritual and material, human and otherwise, to give you advantage. Total dependence on God is not indolence. It is not laziness. When we talk about dependence on God, a lot of people think it's doing nothing. No, it's not. It is not inactivity or passivity. Complete submission on that God and complete dependence on God is not doing nothing. It is not just walking around and saying, ah, I'm depending on God. That's not what it means. When we spend time to pray, it is not because we are lazy. We are showing dependence. When we spend time to study the word of God, to know what God wants, how God wants it, how to go about it, the ways of God, it is not because we are weak. It's because we are dependent. When we listen to hear the word of God and we hunger to hear his word preached and taught, when we hunger and put aside our personal businesses and things that come in between and make ourselves available to hear and receive fresh manna daily, weekly, whether it's on Thursday, whether it's a program system like we just finished one week or on Sunday, it is not because you are not busy. It is not because because, no, it is just an expression of the fact that my activity and my ability do not make me usable and useful to God. Do not make me useful and relevant to God. Dependence on him means knowing his ways, knowing how he wants it. It means I, if you depend on somebody, you ask questions. So in this case, what am I supposed to do? And when you are hearing preaching, it answers that question. When you are hearing teaching, it answers that question. When you are studying the word of God, it answers that question. When you seek counsel from the one who has authority over you, you are answering that question. In this business case, in this relationship issue, in my marital issue, in this thing with my son, in this thing with my business partner, I am confused about this because I want to be sure I don't displease God in all of this. I depend on God for this business. I don't want to make any mistake. So what do you think I should do in this case? It is not because you are foolish. It is because you are wise enough to, need to look for counsel from the one that you depend. So those who think we waste time in church preaching. Those who think it is a waste of time to make time out of your busy schedule to sit down and listen to the word of God. It is not wisdom that is guiding you. It is foolish human arrogance that makes you think you know everything and have everything. I'm sorry, I talk like a father. There are certain words where people feel offended about it. But when I stand here, I am not my age. I am the age of the one who is the ancient of this. I can use the word again, foolish human arrogance that makes you feel you can depend on your ability, depend on your sufficiency and your connection and what the things around you that make you strong. No. So when we fast and pray, it's not because we are lazy. We are showing dependence. When we take time out and study and pray, when we rise at night during the prayer belt and pray, when we show up and sit down and listen and hear, it's not because we are dumb. It is because we depend. It is not because we are inferior to others. It is because we depend and we submit. It is the demonstration of our dependence and it's about the activation of God's help and advantage that will make us useful. I want to leave you with one instruction if you can. Make it a priority to personally study the word of God for yourself to find out what he expects of you in, his, in your life as a child of God. 
we will pray one prayer today in this house that there will be the spirit of dependence and submission so that God can raise people to use people the prayer we prayed last week was Lord help me and use me did you pray that prayer and God said I should come and tell you the people that can be used rise to your feet I just want you to close your eyes and just raise your hands just tell God I'm sorry sorry for my arrogant disposition of thinking and talking and walking and living like I don't need you like you are secondary show me mercy this is not something that is charismatic shouting in tongues this is personal just tell God I'm sorry for living my own life independently trusting you for help to help me on the day of trouble to bless me but I'm not dependent on you I don't care about your ways and what you want of me not interested in how my life can honor you forgive me for teaching myself and instructing myself and counseling myself forgive me for arranging myself shoulder to shoulder with you treating you like we are mates and equal doing what I like how I like how he fits me father in the name of Jesus show mercy in this house 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 let there be the grace of submission in this house let there be the grace of submission take arrogance away take spiritual laziness away take spiritual arrogance away from men and women from leaders and ministers from sons and daughters Lord, we cry, Abba, Father, in submission. We cry, Abba, Father, in dependence. We cry, Abba, Father, in, forgive, in repentance. We cry, Abba, Father, in a turnaround. We come back to you. We just come back to you. Come back to you. Just speak those words. And if you are in this place and you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, it's not Lord, and it's not yet Lord of your life. It's not yet ruler of your life please I'm asking you just ask him to come into your life repent of your sin and ask him to wash you ask him to clean you up ask him to purify you ask him to clean you ask him just talk to him personally repent, confess your sins confess your dependence on yourself, dependence on men and you, on the day of trouble, you expect God to show up. Oh Lord, show mercy. This house will depend on you. This house depends on you. This house trusts in you. This house is built upon you. Lord, we raise you in this house above every man. Lord, we arrange ourselves under you. This church is arranged under you. Marriage is arranged under you. Parenting is arranged under you. Businesses are arranged under you. Finances. Lord, because we know on the day of issue, you will, you will deploy all things to show yourself mighty. Your word says the eyes of the Lord range to and fro the earth to see whose heart is firmly set on him so that he will show himself mighty. Lord, raise hearts to depend on you. Raise people. Can you just lift up your two hands and just cry to God? Say, Lord, I submit to depend on you. I submit in submission to you. Take me completely. Give me a new heart. Mm -hmm. Till I see you. me. Sola. Red O.T. Re. For me. Doti. Red o do 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 tila ti 
take my life and let it be consecrate a lot today consecrate a lot to take my moments and my days take my moments and my let them flow with ceaseless praise let them flow with ceaseless praise can you just use this words and just make consecration? God wants to use people to make wealth in this house. The covenant I have with God is that there will be wealth in this cup because he told me I will give you everything you need. And I share it in the hands of partners and I say, Lord, there will be billionaires from this house. There will be governors, presidents, senior, every level of leadership, pro political, academic, professional, financial, spiritual ecclesiastical this house is the house of leadership just make a consecration say lord i submit i submit lord Halabosha. take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love at the impulse of thy Take my feet and let them be. Take my feet and let them be. Swift and beautiful for thee. Sweet and beautiful for thee. I just want you to, before we sing the next dance, I just want you to raise your voice and give your spirit again, give your heart. Give your past, your present, your future. Give your fears, your worries. What are the things distracting you? What sin is holding you? What person is limiting you? What condition is this sickness? Whatever it is that holds you. Just say, Lord, as I give my life, I give. I give poverty. I give shame. I give disgrace. I give sickness. I give emptiness. I give helplessness and hopelessness. Take my voice. And let me sing. Take my voice and let me sing. Always, only for my king. Always, only for my king. Take my lips and let them be. Take my lips and let them be. Filled with messages from thee. to lift up to and say Lord take my value take whatever is valuable and put your own value there take my my entire life and let me have your entire life take my entire time and let me have your entire time take my entire treasury and let me have your own entire treasury say Lord take my own give me your own my own cannot help me my own cannot sustain me I want you, I want you I want your own, just speak those words take my own take my silver, take my gold take my silver and my gold take my silver not a might what I will hold Every power as thou hast told Just just lift up your hands again. What is it that is you are afraid of giving to God? What is it that you fear? What is it that you fear? That you will not be able to love God and serve God till the end. What is it that causes you anxiety? What is it that causes you fears and worries? Just give it also. He cares for you. The scripture says, cast all your burden on him for he cares. 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 Lord, show that you care. Take my will and make it dying. 
two hands I take sickness from you I take weakness from you in the name of Jesus I take shame from you I take prostrate from the elderly men I take cancerous growth lungs from any part of women any condition of cancer I forbid death in this house I forbid death in this house I forbid failure in this house Lord, let it be recorded that today this house submitted afresh. Let it be recorded that we have taken a decision as a people to arrange our lives under you. Our times are under you. Our resources are under you. Our vision under you. Our jobs and businesses are under you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Can you just wave those hands? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Because by this submission, permission has been given. Lift this house. Lift the politician in this house. Lift the businessman and woman in this house. Lift the professional person in this house. Lift the career person in this house. Lift the students in this house. Lift, lift the self-employed person in this house. Lift the job seeker in this house. Lift the helpless person in this house. Lord, lift the widow and the widower in this house. Lord, lift the orphan in this house. Lord, lift the ministers in this house. Lift children in this house. Lord, lift marriages in this house. In the name of Jesus. Lord, this house, you have lifted this house. Lift this altar higher. Extend your fire from this house to the ends of the earth. Use this house for your glory. Lord, use me. Can you begin to ask yourself, Lord, use me for your glory. Bless me and use me for your glory. Pray that prayer. Bless me and use me for your glory.